As you might have noticed, I have fallen behind on current events, so there's a lot to catch up. But I want to point out from tonight's teaching, I wonder if we're going to go back to normal in 2022. That's the thing that we're wondering about. And my personal, uh, this is what I guess, all right, because I could be wrong. But I, my personal opinion is we are going to go back to normal. And what's going to happen is that it's going to be normalized, and they're going to sweep all this under the rug where people can forget and then get comfortable again. And once they get into that comfortable phase, then the devil's going to attack again. But this time, the next attack, it might be the big thing. If it's not the big thing, then they're going to do another test run and then go back to normal again and then repeat that process. But here's a, what I believe. It's going to be in shorter uh, lengths of time now. Uh, back then in history, the elites, they would wait for about 100 years. But now they've shrunk it. Now I'm seeing 10 years apart. You see 2001 with 9-11, and then you jump literally 10. Uh, you ju jump uh, like uh, 20 years after that. Boom. But now I think it's going to shrink even more. It might go 10 years and 5 years. Why? Because technology is expanding faster. So because of that, they're going to do this much faster. Now here are the steps on what I believe or predict will happen. But it's important to understand this is theoretical. Now some people, they'll accuse me that, well, you know, you're just going off of theories and you're just stretching the Bible and etc. But you got to understand this, is that you never pastored a Bible-believing church, of all things, in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay? So you never done that before. And I like to see you try while gaining online publicity. Yeah. All right? Yeah. I had news media trying to hound on me, trolls trying to get onto us and etc., even during the pandemic situation, you got to admit that uh, what we did was pretty good so far. Amen. And how I was able to manage that is because I always have in my mind predictions. Now, it's important to have many possibilities open and predictions on how the Bible is heading toward. Okay? Why do I have that in mind? That way I can predict what they're going to do next and what we uh, and how we can survive. If I have no idea what they're doing, then how can I predict the enemy's tactics and their plans and how much I can operate my church more freely and how much I should be more wise about it? I mean, you got to admit, how did I survive in YouTube so far? It's because I keep up with it. Yeah. All right? I keep up with it and I look at the Bible and then I open up possibilities to what can happen in the last days of the church and the tribulation. By doing that, I can know the mindset of the enemy and survive. Amen. So you have not been in my shoes with both an internet that gains worldwide publicity and at the same time in a very dominant liberal area with enemies tracking you, okay? If you do that, then you can criticize me. But you have no place to do that when you're stuck at home, just watching online and then whining about every small thing. Amen. Okay, so... From what I predict when I look at the scriptures, and we're going to look at several of these factors, and it'll go in four steps here. The first thing is what I believe is there go there's going to be anger. That's why I think it's going to be back to normal. There's no doubt that whether you're right wing, left wing, Democrat politicians are caving in. Everyone is caving in because why? The people are sick and tired with everything that's going out. All right? There's so much truth going out. So many statements and arguments going out that they're starting to cave in. Now, uh, as I discuss this guy, all right, let's call it Bill Gates' barf, okay? So Billy's barf, all right? So in Billy's barf, some people have been pushing that so hard, but when they've been pushing it, there have been people that have been more resistant, and there have been people who've been uh, against the mandatory restrictions and speaking out. That's what they did. They've opened up Pandora's box where this is very interesting. All the, uh, most of these articles that I point out to you, the people both left and right admit we lost trust in our government. Mm -hmm. See, that's the end result. So there's anger. There's frustration. That's what happened. So here's one from... Open V A E R S, I think it's Viers, Open Viers, but that website keeps track of all the 
repercussions, adverse effects of Billy's barf. So if you got, if Billy barfed on you before, bleh, then th they keep track. It's been 1,967,579. And, and if it's correct, this is in the states alone. Now, uh, you know what's even more shocking? This main website, just simply go on there, they're going to admit in their article, as you keep reading, that this is underreported figures. So people who have mentioned about uh, the detriment that they received when Billy barfed on them, that uh, not everything has been reported. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they're opening their eyes and seeing that this is more of an issue than I thought. Now, I know the scientific arguments against it is that uh, basically it's not foolproof accurate, and because it's not foolproof accurate, there can be over-reporting. But the reason why I, that doesn't really jive with me, I'm open to that possibility, but it doesn't really jive with me because why do their main website don't mention that then about uh, over-reporting is the main issue? Why did they say under-reporting is the main issue? Now, they'll mention in other websites because they're getting hot, they're getting heat, that, yeah, there is over-reporting and stuff like that. But I don't understand why the main topic in this website, when they mention about this, is underreporting. That's the main issue. See, so that doesn't really jive with me. And not only that, if overreporting is a huge issue, I don't understand why the numbers keep going higher for the past months. Okay? If they caught up and then they start to uh, keep track of what's wrong, then why aren't there more coming out? So you have to think about that, these factors. But uh, it's so funny, CNN, yes, CNN, the stupid liberal network, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, you can sing, all right? They're going downhill. But even their reporter, who is familiar with medical issues and then uh, all, everything about the pandemic, specializes in that. Jacqueline Howard in CNN, title of the article, as states plan to lift school, uh, school uh, Mask mandate, CDC, remains vague on updating its guidance. So she argued, CNN, not me, stupid. All right, did you catch that? All right, don't be stupid, you system, you. This is what CNN said. They are against the restrictions, actually. And they were arguing, okay, and then CNN was just listening. I mean, as soon as the founder's gone and those idiots are gone for their scandals, I think life has gotten better over there or something, all right? <laughs> so then, they start to, uh, she started to argue that uh, it's just, uh, it's making it things worse. And because uh, Democrat states are starting to open up, we need to look at the science. That's what's funny. She was arguing the science keeps changing and that we have to look at the science and that what we're going through is not working. But uh, you know what's so funny is that uh, in the New York Times, uh, the title of their article, COVID updates, CDC says cloth masks are not as effective as others, idiots. We, we knew that a long time ago. You can see, and they were just kept pushing and pushing, but the more they pushed, the more they got heat and their unpopularity grew. Another article from the New York Times, which y'all know about, Title of the article, Supreme Court Blocks Biden's Virus Mandate for Large Employers. That didn't go through, as you might recall. That was a huge thing that we were wondering. And once that thing tumbled, everything started to tumble one by one by one. But all of you have heard about these things going on. I mean, no one's, uh, a lot of people aren't buying and are frustrated with all the stupid, uh, stupid things going on. Title from BBC News, COVID, face mask rules and COVID passes to end in England. That was the country that made the huge turning point. Once England said, no more, we're fed up and we're done, then these other countries and then some states in America, you notice, started to follow along. Uh, even the most communist places you can think of, like New Zealand and Australia, I mean, they're really uh, taking heat. Title of the article from Reuters, New Zealand, Australia, Billy Barf mandates, protests gain in numbers. So this was 
from February 11th. Why? Because other countries are going out against it. Boston Globe, title of their article, European countries are easing uh, Billy Barf measures even as they continue to report high volumes of cases. So they're start the Euro Europe, yeah. all right, and the stupid USA say, look at those European countries. Why can't we be like Europe? You know, much happy place. Look what they're doing now. Yeah. Why? Because they're fed up with you idiots over there talking garbage all the stinking time. The, I mean, you push them. Now they're pushing back. I mean, it's gotten so bad, guys, that uh, here's another one. This happened, for some of you who knew about it, January 14, 2022, from the Desert Review. Title of their article, 16,000 scientists stand with Dr. Robert Malone with mRNA Architect. For some of you who didn't know Dr. Robert Malone, the criticism against him is like, he's not the main inventor of it. There are people who contributed it. But there is no doubt from the critics that he was a contributor to when they made the stuff for uh, Billy Barr for you. Billy's Barr. But he spoke out against it, and he was totally not for it, actually. And then you've heard about the famous guy who worked at Pfizer before, title of the Reuters article, Michael Yeadon, you know him, title of the article, The Ex-Pfizer Scientist Who Became an Anti-Billy Barf Hero. So notice that there are so many scientists yep. and people who are connected with big shots. This is not just a typical person who's just throwing in a blog, guys. This is, and I'm not reading from conspiratorial blogs like I told you. I'm reading from mainstream sources and even academic sources to give this point. But this is, uh, uh, here's another one from The Atlantic, but The Atlantic actually interviewed Robert Malone, and he said the, the title of the article is The Billy Barf Scientist Spreading Billy Barf Misinformation. So even though he did not agree with him, he had to admit that when he looked at his papers and everything, that at least he did contribute, that he was at least a part of when they were doing uh, the inventions. But here's something very interesting. A lot of you have heard me use Unheard. Unheard is my go-to site that I highly recommend for people if they want to stick to strictly empirical scientific facts, okay? And these are scientists who are even pro-Billy Barf, so to speak. And even those guys point out, and they, got, they go through every empirical argument and details, and I read it, okay? They don't just go like Robert Malone and Yeadon just giving out claims. They actually take the arguments, tear it apart. They also hear the other side of the pro Billy Barf guys and then they examine it. So I use their website and their sources so many times. But there is one guy who's in the Bay, San Francisco, San Francisco of all places, and the San Francisco Gate published the article from him. Uh, it says right here, we're pro Billy Barf, but can't support California lawmakers school uh, Billy Barf mandate. And this is from Dr. Vinay Prasad. So they even published his article and they allowed it because he had to kind of cave into what they said, which is why they allowed it. But if you look at his article on From Unheard, it is awesome. It's titled we, From Unheard Website, We Need to Talk About the Billy Barf. That's the title of the article. And he did a good job. He even took Joe Rogan's podcast, Robert Malone, and he was fair in pointing out uh, the criticisms against it. And he examined that. But he pointed out that, uh, that some of the stuff that Malone argued, you can't deny it, he mentioned. That it is true, that there is that condition. He did a good job. He, I mean, Sam, you got to realize from his university, it's high in medical school, extremely prestigious. But he mentioned myocarditis, that it is true. And within young men, ooh, I thought we were the stronger ones and stuff like that. How about that? So they're getting on to you. But this is, uh, even uh, Prasad mentioned about the lab leak, and I was like, what? And then when I compared with the other articles, there are too many academic scientists and then there were Harvard, Yale, Columbia, and I'm not talking about the big three that uh, Governor Santos 
had at Florida. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about different Harvard, Yale, Columbia people who got, uh, when they studied the empirical evidence, they said, this animal thing, when we study it a bit more, at the beginning it made sense, but when we studied it a bit more, there are too many problems with this. And they mentioned that the lab leak would be a better uh, understanding. It made more sense. And this is from their article. I'm not claiming it, all right? I'm not claiming it. I'm giving you the sources, Amen. all right? These guys are claiming it. Amen. Okay, all right? You got that. You got that, all right? From the new, uh, unless you want to ban the New York, the Intelligencer, okay, their article. So you can start doing that, all right? Called uh, the Lab Leak Hypo title of the article, The Lab Leak Hypothesis. For decades, scientists have been hot wiring uh, viruses in hopes of preventing a pandemic, not causing one. But what if? And if you read this article, man, it's so thorough. I wish I can go through this, guys, but I don't have time. And I want to tell you the plans over here, all right? So that's the main thing of this teaching. So I'm not going to expound it, but you can look that one up. Another article, this is the best one, I think, because this guy originally critiqued anything that has to do with the lab leak theory, and he was turned off by it. But because some of his people that he respected start to bring up that theory, he, start to, he changed his mind, and he started to go, this is, uh, I, I had to open up. And he did a good job. This is probably the, the guy that would be critical the most of the lab leak theory, but he had to be swayed. Donald G. McNeil Jr., all right, that's his name, uh, title of his article, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love, Love the Lab Leak Theory. And he went through a long spiel. When I read it, I was very impressed, actually. So he pointed out all the critics, all the critics' argument, and he even agreed and sided with them. But then when he started to examine the empirical evidence more, he realized this, some things you have to be open to. The possibility makes sense. Here's another one from Nicholas Wade, title of his article. By the way, this is from the CFR. <laughs> CFR, guys. <laughs> they allowed it, title of the article. The Lab Leak Theory of Billy Barf's Origins with Nicholas Wade. Okay, so this is huge. I'm, t I'm pulling up academic... Big sites, guys, all right? Here's another one. Title of the article is, uh, this is from MIT Technology Review. Title of the article, top researchers are calling for a real investigation into the origin of Billy Barf. All right, and they included Harvard, Yale stuff like this because they weren't buying and they were saying, look, what the, what who, who was doing like a bohemian owl, but anyway, it's just, it's just a crazy thing. But what who who was saying that this is, uh, you guys are failing, you're not doing a really good job on this. There's something suspicious, weird going on. Here's another one, title of the video. This is from Merogenomics, if I'm pronouncing that right, their channel. The title of their uh, video is Spike Protein Inside Nucleus Enhancing DNA Damage. Billy Barf mRNA. Update 18. Isn't that interesting? Hey, this ain't a conspiratorial blog, guys. This is from people who study genetics, yeah. DNA, and stuff like that. And this ain't just simply epidemiologists or scientists or geneticists who are just throwing out claims, like the media scientists will accuse, like Yeadon and Malone. These are people who actually tell every empirical detail, wow. all right? Here's another one. This is big. This is from uh, BMJ, all right? This is a huge, respected website. I think it's an uh, acronym for British Medicine Journalism, I think. But everyone respects this. But they allow this article. Title of the article is, uh, let's see right here. This is from Paul D. Thacker, all right? Paul D. Thacker. But he investigated the stupid organizations who are putting out Billy Barf. And the title of it is uh, Billy Barf Researcher Blows the Whistle on Data Integrity Issues in Pfizer's uh, Billy Barf Trial. Wow. All right, I'm pulling up all these respectable academic 
and mainstream sources, guys, all right? So there's no doubt. Everyone's realizing this is a joke, okay? Or this, there's something weird at least. This is from the Department of Justice website, all right? Uh, why do you trust Pfizer so much when they, ha when they had, when the Justice Department released at Wednesday, September 2nd, 2009, Justice Department announces largest health care fraud settlement in its history. Pfizer to pay $2.3 billion. They had a history of doing that before. How about that? Oh, and by the way, you wonder why people are upset? Title of the article from CNBC, you can't sue Pfizer or Moderna if you have severe Billy Barf uh, effects. The government likely won't compensate you for damages either. And then in that, uh, in that ridiculous article, they'll point out that even the professors and organizations, they realize a lot of unfairness and people who did have adverse effects. So then they said that they're trying to work on it more and that the government needs to work on more to do compensation. But you know, it's just going under the rug like they do with other organizations. Oh, we're trying, we're trying, you know, but they don't. So that's why some of these organization people who are trying to treat the people who suffer the after effects, that they're saying that it's a frustrating process and they sympathize with the victims of this. It's totally messed up. You know why? It's so interesting. If you read that article, the reason why you can't do it, it's because it's one of those rules in legal matters called the sovereign codes, the, the king codes. They're looking for a sovereign and king that can get away with stuff, huh? So if you're a sovereign and a king, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Isn't that interesting? Strange stuff what you're hearing, guys, nowadays. Strange stuff nowadays. A lot of, uh, so that's why there are people speaking out. There's no doubt. And they're realizing that a lot of what's going on is a mess. And they're not buying it. But this is getting worse because the economist actually criticized, uh, you've heard about those truckers and those people who are uh, speaking out, but even The Economist had to title the article, Justin Trudeau's crackdown on protests can make things worse. Why? Because they said that he's taking away the right of free speech. Isn't that interesting? So Canada has its time. Judgment is coming. So a lot of people are speaking out and they're realizing that a lot of it is not, uh, a lot of it is not working. So there's this anger. That's the first step. No matter what side, the point is generally, generally people, they're frustrated. They're angry. And then uh, both parties, liberal or conservative, are going to have to admit that, yeah, the people are angry. It doesn't change that fact. Title of the uh, article from The Insider Canada says it will freeze the bank accounts of Freedom Convoy truckers who continue their anti-Billy Barf uh, blockades. Yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all pushing. They're all pushing against the control. They're sick and tired of this. Now, if we understand that that was the case, then uh, what's going to happen? Why, didn't you realize that even the stupid Anthony Fauci himself that in the MSNBC transcript, title of their transcript, December 29th, 2021, the Rachel Maddow show, that he even admitted that the hospitals, they're overcounting. <laughs> oh, finally, about time, you idiot. About time. We knew that a long time ago. Why did he do that? Because he's getting under fire, guys. He's getting under fire, and so the people are caving in. You know, CNN, all those guys, the government, the Democrat leaders, they're caving in. So because of that, what's going on is you're shifting toward here, the opposition. But before we go here, let's look at Jude. Now let's look at the scriptures. Let's look step by step how this is going to go. Didn't you know the Bible predicted this? You know that? The Bible says that in the last days, what's going to happen is people are going to rebel. Why? Because they're frustrated with their government. And that's a sign, and the Bible says that's definitely going to happen. Look at the book of Jude. And then uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. 
Notice that the Bible says at uh, Jude 1, verse 8, Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise what? Dominion, Dominion and speak evil of what? Dignities. Now go to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2. Jude's uh, tribulation epistle. So it spoke that would happen. 2 Peter 2 talks about the tribulation. It's a tribulation epistle as well. But what did it say? It said right here, 2 Peter 2, verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and what? Despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. So notice right here that the Bible says that this was going to happen. It's a sign of mankind's human nature is anger. And they will turn against the government. That's what the Bible predicted. So then the government leaders, they're going to crash in, they're going to cave in. So that's my prediction number one is that they are crashing, caving in, which we are already seeing with certain states in America. They're starting to release the restrictions and then more people. And CDC is getting a lot of heat on that one. And I don't know if you read the article today from CDC, but they're all caving in, guys. Uh, the title of the CNBC article, CDC wants to give people a break from wearing masks as pandemic improves, director says. <laughs> How about that? So what they're, what's going on? They're all getting the heat. So they're caving into it little by little. Uh, here's, and notice the hammer, hammer's come, coming down on it. There's an opposition. Now we have to find people to frame, people to blame. Why? So that I don't get the blame. Yeah. So then they're going to find people to crucify. But that's been a history of elitists, and not just elitists or uh, conspiracies, but this has been a history of history itself. Yeah. Yeah. You look throughout even the Bible. People, all, when uh, they start to get afraid of the people, they find someone to blame. Oh, yeah. They always do that. So what men learn from history is that men never learn from history. But that's what they're doing now. Now the hammer came down for these people. Why? Because these guys are not the top of the pyramid. Why? Because somebody is behind the scenes whose name is not given, controlling the strings, so that the people's anger and blame can be turned against these guys right here. That's why these uh, puppet masters need these people to cover their backs. That's why we need this guy a little longer because he talks really well, all right? He's an elf, all right? He looks like an elf when you look at him. This elf can talk really way and uh, outsmart Santa Claus really well with this Christmas candy cane. So we need him a little longer to speak for us because they're not going to find a sly devil like this guy. Talk his way around. So the judgment has come. Title of the article from CNBC. CNN boss Jeff Zucker resigns says he failed to disclose office relationship with former Andrew Cuomo aide. You heard about Cuomo that the hammer came down because of sexual charges. But Zucker has been caught with his affair, and guess what? The person that he had an affair with or a relationship with was related to Andrew Cuomo, had connection and ties. So Zucker, because of his reputation, what? I stepped down, runs away. You know, and then they uh, beat on the pastors who are bold enough to not step down, to take a stand for the Lord. These cowards, they can't take a beating. You know why? They're used to criticizing other people with their yeah. big fat mouths. They're cowards and they're sissies. They can't take criticism themselves. Look, I put up with your garbage for two years, guys. Yeah. All right? You bunch of sissies, you, yeah. man. Jeff Zucker probably still pees in his pants and is wearing a diaper. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Come on, preacher. So, so, is, so is Chris Cuomo. Maybe both of them are. Oh, yeah. Title of the article uh, from NPR, Chris Cuomo, newly fired from CNN, faces an allegation of sexual misconduct. How about that? Another one from The Guardian, and this is a liberal source, all right? Title of their article, Scandals, Firings, and Tabloid-like News. What is happening at CNN? <laughs> and it's not a secret 90% of their viewers drop down once January hit, guys. Yeah, that's right. Why? Because, see, there's an, op there's an opposition. Yeah. There's an anger and frustration with this. They're going to oppose. Mm -hmm. They're going to oppose. 
They're sick and tired of what's going on. Here's another one, you know, BLM, BLM, that kind of garbage. Well, what happened? AP News from David Bowder, title of the article, ABC suspends Whoopi Goldberg over Holocaust race remarks. Why? You can't hide behind, uh, you know, your skin color anymore or your ethnicity anymore. Here's another one. Uh, you know, it's so, these guys are such wow ass now. They're so wow ass about cancel culture, BLM, and then controlling people. Look, man, I mean, you just uh, made the people angry now. You made them so angry with all this garbage that you've been spreading that now you're reaping what you've sown. Now you're part of this cancel culture thing on the other end. And then MSNBC Wines, title of their article from the week, MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski, if I'm pronouncing her last name right, but I don't care, says cancel culture is getting so out of hand after Whoopi Goldberg's suspension. Title of their article. Oh, isn't it nice to be on the receiving end, you bunch of evildoers? Yeah. You reap what you sow. Yeah. Now, I want you to go to Daniel 10. Daniel 10. And then I want you to also turn to Daniel 8. Daniel 10, Daniel 8. And then there's one more passage I want you to turn to. I want you to go to Luke 4. There's Luke 4, Daniel 10, and uh, Daniel 8. Here's one. Uh, how many of you have heard about this one? The comedian, Heather McDonald. She, what she did was she, gave, <laughs> she, was, she tried to make a joke, and she had the audacity to say, like, she... I guess she had no fear of the Lord or whatever, but she said, I got Billy barfing on me once and Billy barfing on me twice and Billy barfing on me thrice and I guess Jesus loves me more than other Christians. You know what happened? Title, in the middle of that speech, in the middle of that speech, like King Herod, yeah. title of the article from People, who keeps track of the Hollywood people, right? Heather McDonald posts video of her onstage faint that resulted in a skull fracture. Middle of that, you'll see her fall. Just look up that video, guys. It really seriously happened. No fear of the Lord, guys. No fear of the Lord. Here's another one. You all heard about Jeffrey Epstein. So it's coming out. The truth is coming out more and more, guys. Title of the article from New York Times. Bill Gates met with Jeffrey Epstein many times despite his past. Wow, how about that? Here's another one. Fauci's days are getting numbered more and more from ABC 12 News Channel, title of the article, Fauci staffers, his staffers, okay? This is not just Rand Paul pulling up, you know, whatever evidence he can with gain-of-function research and then there's several different interpretations. No, this is his staffers now, okay? Fauci staffers raised concern in 2016 about NIH funding gain-of-function research in Wuhan, wow. title of article. All right, the days are getting numbered. Many, many, tackle you, Harrison. Yeah. Babylon is falling, guys. Babylon is falling. Here's another one. Is this a surprise? Elitists have a history who have a history of control, have a history of sexual scandals. You see that with CNN? You see that with these politicians? And no surprise with Bill Gates. Title of the article from the Business Insider, Microsoft hires external lawyers to review its sexual harassment policies, including the handling of allegations against Bill Gates. In fact, it was so, it was so, so troubling that the wife would know, every, would know more. So the title of the liberal news source, liberal, The Guardian, title of the article, Melinda Gates began divorce moves at time of Bill's meetings with Jeffrey Epstein revealed. Wow. How about that? And this one from Yahoo, which we already know. Chris Cuomo was fired by CNN after sexual assault allegation surfaced. Days are getting number. Another one from the New York Times. How a secret assault allegation against an anchor upended CNN. The days are getting numbered. Mene, mene, tekel, you, Harrison. So what they're caving into now is this. This is from Newsweek, title of the article. So Fauci, finally, wow, the guy who says, no, I wouldn't, you know, cancel Christmas, cancel Thanksgiving, you know, cancel your happy birthdays, you know. 
of course, that was sarcasm, all right? Don't, don't accuse me of misinformation, all right? S uh, YouTube analytics, okay? I'm just exaggerating, okay? <laughs> Title of the Newsweek uh, article, Fauci says U.S. approaching Billy Barf endemic phase end to restrictions. Now they're sa he's saying that. So they're starting to end it. But this is very scary. That sh Why is it that they're willing to say an end now? You ever thought about that? Why is it they're willing to say an end? Some people, this is a scary part. This is why it's worse than you think, guys. All right? Some people might think this is a victory. We spoke out. We uh, charged against it. But you guys got to realize this. This is still the devil's kingdom. Oh, yeah. All right? And you can't, uh, you can't go against Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy is the world will become the new world order under the Antichrist. He will control everything. You can't go against that. You know, what you've, uh, you know what they're doing? You never, uh, you're still going by their plans. What's going on is they're, retre they're retreating temporarily, finding people to crucify, and they predicted this anyways. You know why? This is from Gates Notes. From Gates Notes. Title of the article, Reasons for Optimism After a Difficult Year. And in his article, you know what Bill Gates said? By 2022, is going to be normalized. Mm. He said this last uh, two, one and a, probably one and a half years ago, guys. Mm. It's like, see, they're predicting human nature pattern, and they're doing something. It's very weird. But, you know, to be fair to Bill Gates, you know, maybe he was just very, very smart because he's a smart guy. So because of that, you know, it was an, like a, a rational prediction by just going by how he perceives things. He's a very smart guy, guys. I hope you drank his barf before, too, because uh, the areas over here, they're really pushing us to drink that barf, all right? This is uh, getting s so much out of hand, and they're finding people to crucify. This is from Forbes article. This is very interesting. Title of the article, I might read his book. Bill Gates thinks that his barf could be the last pandemic, and he's written a book on how to make that happen. Last pandemic, guys. Last pandemic. What's next? Does that mean there's no more trial runs then? And that the next one, if it has to be controlling the people, the next thing is it, where this guy comes down and starts to control the world. Wow. See, it might be worse than you think, guys. It may not be, yay, we won and stuff like that. No, it may be worse than you think. All right, so this is one thing you have to understand from these following passages. Mene, mene, tekel, you person. Babylon is falling, and they're finding people to crucify. They're running for the hills. But Satan is not done. Satan, he said, Babylon is gone. I just have a new batch ready. So these guys are dead, crucified, destroyed. Why? Because they wallow in their sin. These people live down their sin. They were drunk on their power, but their master, Satan, tricked them. And now they're suffering the consequences of their sin. And Satan's like, I don't need you guys. You were just pawns. Now here's a new batch, and he's getting that new batch out. And that new batch, look, you did not read biblical history, did you? When Satan has these elites gone in Babylon, he has a new elite, Persia. But once those elites are gone in Persia, he has a new elite, Greece. That's Satan's tactic throughout history, guys. Just because you defeated Babylon doesn't mean there's going to be no Persia. Right. And just because you defeat Persia, that doesn't mean there's no Greece. Just because you defeat Greece, that means there's no Rome. Look how the Maccabees tried, right? Yeah. Christians nowadays are trying to be Maccabees. But you can't bring in the kingdom. Not even Jesus, God Almighty himself, did that. You know that? Not even Jesus did that when he came in his first coming. He knew that the only way the church survives is undergoing through this persecution. That's right. To just go through this persecution and then just win souls. We've done pretty good for 2,000 years, haven't we? <laughs> God's church is still marching on. Why? Because God wants to crush all of them at the end. He knows that, look, we cannot, we're not post-millennialists. 
We're not post-tribulation people. We'll never bring in the kingdom ourselves. We're pre-millennial, pre-tribulation Bible believers. We believe there is no hope for this lost world. We cannot build it, Rick Warren. We cannot build it. We need the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come down. That's important to understand. Dispensationalism has helped a lot with end times, with Bible prophecy. Yeah. Didn't you know prophecy? People get into conspiracies. It's amazing they get post-trib, but you got to realize this. Bible prophecy, if you study history, how that came out is because of Larkin and Schofield, these guys, because they were teaching about dispensationalism, and it's inevitable when you uh, get into Bible prophecy, it's because of dispensationalism. You notice how this syncs well with dispensationalism prophecy? even the conspiracies that you hear, because it's meaning every time period how the Lord's doing things. All right, look at Luke 4. What does Satan say? Luke chapter 4. He gives it to the people he wills, and he can take it away. Yeah. All right, look at Luke chapter 4. We'll look at verse... Six, and the devil said unto him, all this power, that's the kingdoms of the world at verse five, will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to what? Whomsoever I will, I give it. Go to Daniel 10. See, it's not a problem for him. Gives it to Zucker, Cuomo, Epstein, Fauci, Gates, whatever, but then he can find new people. There will always be more evil people, plenty for the devil. Daniel 10, look what happened. Daniel 8 first, Daniel chapter 8. Now look at this, Greece, okay? Verse 21, and the rough goat is the who? King of Grecia. Okay, from Greece, this king, Grecian king, who is coming out of this? Verse 23, and the latter time of who? Their kingdom. Their kingdom. That's from Greece. Isn't this the Antichrist? When the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark senses shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and it shall destroy the mighty and the what? He's going against the Jews. Not only that, verse 25, he's standing up against the prince of princes. See, that's Satan's man, Satan incarnate. Yeah. That's the Antichrist. He's Grecian king. But look, Satan switches roles. Go to Daniel 10. Look at this, guys. Daniel 10. If we look at verse 13, this angel said, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Why? This uh, prince of Persia is not a human then. Angels can crush humans. This is a demonic being. This is Satan. So the prince of Persia is Satan. But look at this. Look at verse 20. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the who? Prince of Grisha shall come. See, the devil switches role. Oh, we're fighting against Cuomo, Zucker, Gates, Epstein, Fauci, and all those elites. And then Satan's like, then comes a new guy. His name is Antichrist. His name is False Prophet. His name is Babylon, Rome, Revelation 17. And if it's the last pandemic, there's no more trial runs. Wow. Get ready for the next one, boys. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, look at Revelation. Look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Now we go to the third step right here, okay? We go to the third step. So then, is it left or is it right? Well, believe it or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? Look, I appreciate, uh, uh, I can acknowledge and appreciate some people in our government and even what Trump did on a lot of things, I believe that there are some uh, cases right here. You can see he's trying to go against the elitist system. And, you know, people are trying to get back to their forefathers, freedom. Hey, you know, uh, if people want to even vote for that, I'm not saying you're sinning if you're voting. I'm not saying that, okay? I recognize there's some good. The, Peter even said, honor to whom honor is due and to pray for the leaders. I get all of that. But you got to realize this, it's only a small part. 
you can say that these people who are trying to push Christian ideology or something, they only reach the base of the pyramid. They're only going to clean the base of the pyramid. This is the base of the pyramid. Maybe these guys are a little bit higher in the middle of the pyramid, but you can't, you're only cleaning up the base. You'll never hit the top, whoever the top is. But I know one of them is the Vatican, but uh, that's in my other videos. I'm not going to expound it and prove it here, okay? But you know what the top is. It's more than that. So is it the left or is it the right? Well, here's something that you have to think about, which is uh, something uh, pretty scary. The left speaks out, right? The left speaks out, and then they try to go against uh, and control the people. But, you know, the people are upset. They're angry. So then they, there's anger, and then there's opposition, right? But then you're hitting right here, and this uh, third place right over here, you're hitting the left-right paradigm. But in this left-right situation, left is angering more of the right. And you can anger the right so much that I don't know if you heard of this about the alt-right. The alt-right is where people are claiming it's that white power stuff. It's that white power stuff where the Nazis will be in place. Nazism is the alt-right. Now look at, uh, for some of you, you got to think about this. This is history. They were scared of communism. Yes, I'm talking about Nazi Germany. They were scared about communists coming in. That's why they listened to a person who was angry and opposed. So then, do you know how you can get elected for president? It's simple. Look at one, uh, look how Trump did it. Yeah. Anger. And then people go, finally, someone championing my cause. There's so much anger. Putting those CNN people, those news reporters back to where they deserve. And then see, there's an opposition. And that's why, here's the thing is that, look, uh, you know, there are some good things that Trump did, but his historical event is very eye opening. His case is proof that you can get people seeking for a leader oh, yeah. to speak out against their current leaders because these are the elitists. These are the real people controlling the world. No, Satan is laughing behind the scenes and always replaces a different master. But here's the thing is that whether, you know, the Catholic Church, they always were winners in no matter what. They were always winners. You know why? They cover both left and right. Fox News covered with Catholicism, and you already know this. Look at all the pol politician big names. They all have connections to Catholic universities or Catholic backgrounds. You saw that. I mentioned about Pelosi, Trump, and Fauci, and all these guys, left and right, Catholic. So they can switch whatever side they want to. So they'll always win. They'll always win. Why? Because you can get a Pope Francis who's very liberal, but he won't last forever. The Vatican, though, will still remain. It has remained for over a thousand years. Why? Because they have to fulfill prophecy. They're going to keep on going. Title of the article from the Holocaust Encyclopedia, The Nazi Rise to Power. You know what they said? It points out in this article, I can't read all of it for time's sake, but if you I would encourage you to read that article and it will turn your blood cold. Picture yourself as these people in Nazi Germany as you read that article. They were frustrated with their current governments, the other systems out there. And finally, one guy who's supposed to be not really educated, who's supposed to be not that smart, they sought after him as their leader. Why? Because he was championing their cause and they completely became... They did not hesitate to join this Antichrist in attacking the Jews yeah. and to do genocide. How can you do the Holocaust? How did they end up that way? Didn't you know there are people who were Nazis, but they didn't know about the hor horrible Holocaust? <laughs> didn't you know that? What if, like Gates said, the last pandemic, trial runs over and they know this is next? Why? Because the Antichrist has to do Jewish genocide. And if you look at that, it's 
history is repeating that. History proves that. They were so scared of this communist regime, they became alt-right Nazi. And then they started to kill the Jews. Isn't that scary, guys? And uh, I don't know if you knew about our government. It doesn't matter left or right uh, which side you're at. Because here's an uh, interesting uh, quote. Carol Quigley's book is what I highly recommend for people who want to get into about the elites and who's controlling in our world, the conspiracies. It is the handbook, the foundational book. He graduated uh, from Georgetown. He's very highly educated and very smart. But, so people respect him. But he wrote a history book and he pointed out that the round table, which gave birth to CFR, Bilderbergers, Trilateral Commission, and all that kind of stuff, the bankers, he pointed out that those guys were the ones who were controlling behind the scenes. And then uh, I'm going to read you uh, a quote from Carol Quigley's book, but, there's a, uh, but I'm reading from Brotherhood of Darkness. So Dr. Stanley Monteith, he was actually here in California, Monterey, all right, Monterey, California. All right. So he mentioned about all this kind of stuff. But uh, he quoted from Carol Quigley, and uh, here's what, how your voting really works for some of you who didn't know about it. Okay, we're against the liberal, the communist, right? But look at this. The two ends of this English-speaking access have sometimes been called, perhaps facetiously, the English and American establishments. There is, however, a considerable degree of truth behind the joke, a truth which reflects a very real power structure. Why? Why is it like English against American, like English people? America, it's kind of like English people against English-speaking people, right? It's not really us against the foreign invaders or the communists, right? Why is it like amongst us? This is eye-opening. It is this power structure which the radical right in the United States has been attacking for years in the belief that they are attacking the communists. But this is the eye-opening part. This is particularly true when these attacks are directed, are they so frequently at Harvard Socialism or at left-wing newspapers like the New York Times and the Washington Post or at foundations and their dependent establishments? basically their own people, not actual Russia communists and the foreign invaders. And that was eye-opening. I'm like, that is exactly right. So the country is becoming weaker. It's dividing and attacking each other. See that? So then, why? Because then those guys outside of USA who are, more, yeah, they can have more of the power. So the real elitist behind the scene, the Bible says, I'll come to that later, but there has to be a socialist communist structure. There has to be at the end. But it's amazing that you can be so scared of this and go alt-right. And by the way, didn't Hitler call his party the socialist? Isn't socialist one of the words? What a trick, huh? Isn't that something? Is that true that uh, there's going to be a leader who ch that they're going to look up to and go see Kyle, and then they later on, J Jewish genocide could happen. Revelation 6, look at this. Look at the wording here. Verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. Now, a uh, majority of Bible prophecy scholars and preachers will admit this is the Antichrist, right? But look at this Antichrist. And a what? Crown, Crown was given unto him. That means these people are going to want him. You need to make people want him. You need to make people want a savior. We saw that with Trump, that, that there was no hesitation on that one, even Christian churches. See that? Why? Because they're fed up with all of this. All right? Like I told you before, look, I want whatever relief that I want because I'm in a very left-wing socialist area. So whatever uh, freedom that I can have or economic prosperity or freedom of speech, I would want that. I get that, but just because I go for that, that doesn't mean that I'm free from this, that our uh, state and our area is going to be free from this. No, it's, it's a game. It's a game. It's a game. Keep reading. And he went forth what? Conquering and to conquer. Yeah, he has to. Yes, 
Adolf Hitler, attack these elitists right here. We need you to attack these elitists right here. Adolf Hitler, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil. And then they're laughing. This guy's laughing behind the scenes because ultimately the last step, he controls. And guess what? You're never free from dictatorship. It was always disguised as freedom. If you doubt me, look at the liberals today. We know they're increasing control, but they keep saying democracy is at stake. Democracy at stake. January 6th was a horrible day where our democracy was at stake. These idiots. You notice that? You know what they are? They're just part of the game. Yeah. Throughout history, people have always said, I give you freedom, I give you freedom. Look at the communist dictators. They were frustrated. Look, this is not just the Nazi, even the communists. You know how this rose? They were upset. They were angry with their elitists and their leaders, poor becoming more poor, so then they wanted to hear an equal share with the poor. So they were upset with the elitists, so they opposed. So yeah, Castro, yes, Castro, we'll join you. When Stalin comes in, yeah, okay, we'll join you. Lenin, we'll join you. We're going to re Bolshevik revolution, everything. No different. And then the Nazis repeated it. And today you're seeing that. No different. All disguised as freedom and democracy, guys. But it's not. You got to realize this is all a game. It's fulfilling scripture. If, because look at this. Trump, we have to admit, has his faults. Title of the Business Insider article, Trump spoke at a 9-11 Moonies conference organized by the widow of the Reverend Sun, Sun Myung Moon praising the controversial Unification Church. You know why? Because they have a newspaper source that conspiracy theorists use to attack the left-wing agenda. Didn't you know that? I don't know if you knew that. Uh, was it called the Washington Times, I think? So people use that source to attack the left-wing agenda, but you didn't know that was a unification church, Reverend Sung Myung Moon. See, they're all playing behind the scenes. This is from The Hill, and this is a right-wing source talking about a right-wing person, Trump, okay? The Hill, title of the article, Maxwell Accuser says Epstein took her to meet Trump when she was 14. And you're going to see other articles that says Trump did take on the plane, too. They're right on the plane, too. There's something going on. Wow. All right. Now, look at uh, Revelation chapter 13. Let's close it off. I hope that this is going to be eye-opening as, as we head toward 2022. As we go to 2022, look around you and see what's going on. You might be surprised a lot of the things I said will turn out to be true later on. You might be surprised. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So the Antichrist is a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. His mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Look at this. He controls the whole world. Look at verse uh, Seven, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations to the point that they worship him at verse four. That is pure socialism, communism, or, but these labels won't matter. So political pundits can stop uh, criticizing me about, well, you don't know what communism is, socialism is. Here's the point, buddy, is that it doesn't matter about labels. They all have different ways of doing it. The point of the matter is, is that there's some kind of elitist controlling. That's the bottom line, all right? There's some elitist controlling behind the scenes. And isn't it interesting, the Antichrist, that he has the feet of a bear. You know what Russia was known as, okay? Russia, where communism used to be at. But it's still not free from communism, I think, you know, when you look at the current president. But anyway, point is, is that it says that Russia moves as the feet of a bear. That's how they conquer their world and their territory. And then one of their emblems and symbol is a bear, if I recall correctly. So then socialism, communist, will, will win in the end. So here's something you have to think about. Some of the elitists in power, it may seem like that they're winning, but you don't know later on that, hey, I need you back again. And it may only be a temporary victory because the Cuomo case, I don't know if you heard about it. This is ridiculous. Title of the article from Forbes, groping charge dropped against ex-governor Andrew Cuomo. 
DA dropped it. And the woman, she still wanted to pursue the case, but the lawyer said, we cannot do it. What's going on? I don't know. It's just a supposition. It's just an assumption. But only Times of the Union, which is not a mainstream source, of, uh, but only them covered the actual victim's wording. Title of the article, Comiso, DA's decision in Cuomo case, the reason victims are afraid to come forward. That's what she said. This is the reason why victims are afraid to come forward. Why? Because of the people in power, she said. So you know what these, and then Cuomo is just saying, I regret that I stepped down from being governor. I wonder why. He thinks he can still get away with it. Idiots, evil people like him. Fauci can still, I mean, he's still sitting out and people still praise him in spite of that. So people keep saying fire Fauci or imprison him and stuff like that. And no, I don't mean a gunshot fire Fauci, all right? So Fauci, don't whine and cry in your seat and accuse you know, me like you accused Rand Paul because he said fire Fauci. I had somebody threaten me with a gun and stuff like that. That's not what I meant, all right? Idiots like him. Sensitive, sensitive cancel culture, you know. So. Fox News, title of the article, Forbes contributor says he was fired over investigative stories on Fauci. <laughs> See, these guys, they got the power. They got the connections. So in the end, they still control. Title of the article from Fox News, which everyone knows, it's not new, new news. Biden repeatedly implies he's not in charge of when, where he can take questions from the press. If you hear him in his speeches, he'll say, I'm not allowed to say, you know, they told me not to say it. My handlers, he said that so many times, you know. This guy, you know he's not the one in charge. He's not one really ruling behind the scenes, all right? There's something going on, all right? It's just so messed up. Understanding all of this that fulfills scripture, I want to give you one last quote from communists, from actual communists. You know what they said about America? Extremely interesting stuff. J. Edgar Hoover discussed the similarity between the two concepts when he wrote J. Edgar Hoover, all right? You know that guy, right? He said this. In June 1957, Nikita Khrushchev, Soviet Communist Party boss, was interviewed before a nationwide American television audience. With calm assurance, he stated, I can prophesy what's going to happen in the future, that your grandchildren in America will live under socialism. And please do not be afraid of that. Your grandchildren will not understand how their grandparents did not understand the progressive nature of a socialist society. Wait a minute, that's been going on for years. Nikita Khrushchev, communist. Communist, guys. I'm talking about communists right here. Here's another one. This is scary. The American, uh, this is the leader of the Socialist Party in the United States, guys. Okay, United States. Socialist Party, Norman Thomas. And he's so stupid. He said this, the American people will never knowingly adopt socialism. But under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program. Until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing, without knowing how it happened. Here's another one. Uh, former chairman of the American Communist Party, Earl Browder, he said this. America is getting socialism on the installment plan through the programs of the welfare state. There is more, there is more real, real Social, I'm quoting a word for word. There is more real socialism in the United States today than there is in the Soviet Union. Wow. By the way, the year is 1966. And it's far worse than that. Things are going to get much worse than you think. You know why? Because we're this close. Wow. But this is good news for us. Yeah, amen. Why are you saying amen? Unless you're a post trivia you can't say amen. Wow. You know why you're saying amen? That means that it may be in our lifetime 
that we're soon going to go up at the rapture and we're going to see Jesus face to face. Amen. So rapture call. So guys, do you see we don't have much time left perhaps. What if this is the last five years you've got wow. to get involved in a Bible believing church? Wow. Guys, please go to a Bible believing church. We have people here who are onlineers who know the value of that. A gathered assembly of Bible believers. Why? Because you can't just sit down and know all of this, like my sermon, be doers, not knowers of the word. You can't just have all this knowledge and swim in your head. What are you going to do about it? That's then good. you're no different from an atheist person who's sitting down doing nothing for the Lord. See, so go out and do something. How do I get into a Bible-believing church? Go to our website, www.realbiblebelievers.com. It's in the description link. Click on that, please. Go to our resources section. Look in our church directory. Go to a Bible-believing church. And don't be critical about pastors, you know, that, well, you know, he doesn't teach deep enough or he's a little bit imperfect here or there. You know, you got to realize this, is that God uses imperfect people for his glory. Amen. All right. I mean, at least they're not like King David who committed murder and adultery, right? So if the people can follow David rather than Absalom, who's a type of the Antichrist, I think you guys can do that too, you know? So that's why it's important to get involved in a Bible-believing church. Work for the night is coming as the hymn goes, because this might be your last five years to do something for the Lord. Now, guys, let's get back to soul winning. Let's get back to street preaching. Let's get back to coming to church, getting involved, doing the song leading, the piano playing, and then because this might be your last chance to do it, and you'll never do it. So do what you can because time is coming. I'm not predicting and I'm not claiming that the rapture will be in five years or less, but I'm saying that because of everything that we're looking at, it can be a very, very, very possible scenario, almost likely even. So are you willing to risk that and take that chance? Father God, I pray that tonight's teachings have been eye-opening helpful to the hearers, and help us to prepare for your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.